I need to tell you something that, until very recently, only a handful of people on this planet knew, and what I'm about to reveal may fundamentally alter your understanding of where we stand in the cosmic order. Before we begin, I need you to do something for me. Comment your city name below and tell me. Have you noticed anything unusual in the night sky over the past few weeks? Any lights that don't move like satellites? Any patterns that seem too deliberate to be random? NASA has been quietly collecting reports and the data we're seeing suggests this isn't isolated to one region. We need to know where you are. For decades, I've stood at the intersection of theoretical physics and the profound mysteries that govern our cosmos. I've spent my life translating the language of quantum mechanics, string theory, and cosmology into terms the public could grasp. I've always believed in the power of science to illuminate the darkness of our ignorance, but there are some things some discoveries that don't illuminate. They reveal shadows we never knew existed and cast doubt on everything we thought we understood about our role in this vast, indifferent universe. Three weeks ago, something arrived in our solar system. Not a comet, not an asteroid, something else entirely. The object was designated 3I Atlas by the International Astronomical Union, the third interstellar visitor we've confirmed, following Oumuamua and 2I Borisov. On the surface, it appeared to be another rogue traveler from beyond our solar neighborhood, drifting through the cosmic void on a trajectory that defied the gravitational choreography of our sun. NASA's deep space observation networks picked it up as it crossed the heliopause, that invisible boundary where the sun's influence fades and true interstellar space begins. At first, the astronomical community approached it with the usual scientific curiosity. We calculated its velocity roughly 78 kilometers per second relative to the sun. We analyzed its spectroscopic signature, searching for chemical compounds that might tell us about its origin. We mapped its trajectory with precision, noting the hyperbolic orbit that confirmed it hadn't originated from our solar system. Everything pointed to a natural phenomenon, another cosmic wanderer passing through our neighborhood on its way to nowhere in particular. Then, on the 14th day of observation, something impossible happened. The object began transmitting. I remember exactly where I was when I received the encrypted communication from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I was in my office at the City College of New York, reviewing equations related to parallel universes and the multiverse theory I've championed for years. My secure terminal chimed with an alert marked with the highest classification level I'd ever seen. The message was brief. Dr. Kaku, your immediate consultation is required. 3i Atlas is not what we thought. When I accessed the data stream, I felt something I haven't experienced since I was a graduate student first grappling with the implications of quantum entanglement. A profound sense that reality was far stranger and more unsettling than our equations could capture. 3i Atlas wasn't just reflecting radio waves from our own broadcasts back at us, the way some asteroids do when our signals bounce off their metallic surfaces. It was generating its own signal, a structured mathematical sequence that bore all the hallmarks of intentional communication. The frequency was precise, cycling through prime numbers in a pattern that no natural phenomenon could produce. The signal strength was modulating in ways that suggested not just intelligence, but technology far beyond our current capabilities, and embedded within that mathematical sequence was something that made my blood run cold. A countdown. The transmission wasn't continuous. It pulsed in regular intervals, each pulse containing a decreasing integer. When we first detected it, the number was 407. Six hours later, it was 406. The pattern was unmistakable. Something or someone, was counting down to an event, and that event was tied to 3i Atlas's journey through our solar system. I've spent my career studying the nature of time itself, contemplating whether it flows like a river or exists as a static dimension we simply perceive sequentially. But in that moment, time felt like a countdown clock I couldn't stop, ticking toward an unknown deadline with implications I couldn't yet fathom. The emergency task force assembled within 48 hours. Scientists from NASA, the European Space Agency, SETI, the Department of Defense, and theoretical physicists like myself gathered in a secure facility outside Washington. The atmosphere was unlike anything I'd experienced in decades of scientific collaboration. This wasn't the excitement of discovery. This was fear masked by professional composure. The lead analyst from NASA's Deep Space Network presented the findings. 
The signal wasn't just a countdown. It was layered with additional information. Beneath the primary sequence, there were what appeared to be spatial coordinates, not in our standard astronomical notation, but in a mathematical framework that took our team 72 hours to partially decode. When we finally translated the first set of coordinates, we realized they were pointing to specific locations in our galaxy, star systems we'd already identified as potentially harboring habitable exoplanets. But there was something else in the signal that defied our initial interpretation, a secondary layer of data that, when processed through our most advanced pattern recognition algorithms, resembled nothing so much as a genetic sequence. Not human DNA, not any terrestrial genetic code, but something with a similar structural logic, a blueprint for biological information encoded in a universal mathematical language. That's when the true horror of what we were observing began to crystallize in my mind. This wasn't first contact, this was an inspection. I've often spoken publicly about the Fermi paradox, the troubling question of why, in a universe so vast and ancient, we haven't detected obvious signs of extraterrestrial intelligence. Where is everybody? I've proposed various solutions over the years. Perhaps advanced civilizations destroy themselves before achieving interstellar communication. Perhaps the distances are simply too vast. Perhaps we're looking in the wrong way or listening at the wrong frequencies. But there's another solution to the Fermi paradox, one I've always found too disturbing to seriously entertain in public discourse. The zoo hypothesis. The idea that advanced extraterrestrial civilizations know we're here and have deliberately chosen not to make contact, either because we're being studied as specimens in a cosmic laboratory or because we're under some form of galactic quarantine deemed too primitive or too dangerous to be integrated into whatever larger cosmic community might exist. Three, I Atlas suggested something even more unsettling than passive observation. It suggested active monitoring periodic inspection, and now perhaps a judgment being rendered. The countdown continued. With each passing hour, the number decreased. Our attempts to send a response signal failed. Or rather, they elicited no change in the object's transmission pattern. It was as if 3i Atlas wasn't interested in dialogue. It was simply announcing something, the way you might announce an impending medical procedure to a patient who has no say in the matter. On the seventh day of analysis, a breakthrough came from an unexpected source Source. A young astrophysicist specializing in techno-signatures, indicators of advanced alien technology, noticed something peculiar about the object's trajectory. It wasn't just passing through our solar system on a random path. It was making subtle course corrections, tiny adjustments in its velocity that suggested propulsion, controlled navigation, and those corrections were steering it on a path that would bring it close to Earth. Not dangerously close, but close enough for detailed observation of our planet. The implications were staggering. This wasn't a natural interstellar object at all. It was a probe, an artificial spacecraft from another civilization, and it had come to our solar system with purpose. I found myself thinking about the Voyager probes we launched in the 1970s, those lonely ambassadors carrying golden records with images and sounds from Earth, messages in a bottle cast into the cosmic ocean. We built them hoping that someday, millions of years from now, an alien intelligence might discover them and learn that humanity once existed. We imagined ourselves as the message senders, the cosmic voices calling out into the void. But what if we've had it backwards all along? What if we're not the senders, but the recipients? What if civilizations far older and more advanced than ours have been sending their own probes through the galaxy for millions of years, checking in on developing worlds, monitoring the emergence of intelligence, waiting for certain thresholds to be crossed before making their presence known? The countdown reached 213. Then, without warning, the signal changed. The mathematical sequence that had been transmitting continuously suddenly included a new element, what our team came to call the response protocol. Embedded in the signal was a clear instruction, a mathematical formula that, when decoded, revealed itself to be a communication template. It was as if 3i Atlas had finished its preliminary scan and was now offering us a chance to respond, to prove we'd reached a certain level of technological sophistication. The debate that followed was unlike anything I've witnessed in my scientific career. Do we respond? Do we attempt to communicate with whatever intelligence created this probe? The camps divided quickly. Some argued that silence was the safest option. We had no idea what we were dealing with, no framework for understanding the intentions behind this mysterious visitor. 
Others insisted that remaining silent was itself a response, a declaration of fear or primitive isolationism that might be judged unfavorably. I found myself in the uncomfortable position of arguing for engagement, despite my own profound uncertainty. As a theoretical physicist, I've always believed that knowledge, however unsettling, is preferable to ignorance. But I'll confess something to you now that I didn't voice in those classified meetings. I wasn't sure I believed my own argument. Some part of me wanted wondered if there are truths in this universe that we're not ready for. Revelations that could shatter the psychological foundations of human civilization. We crafted a response. It was elegant in its simplicity. A mathematical proof, a demonstration of our understanding of fundamental physics, and embedded within it, a question. We asked, in the universal language of mathematics, what the countdown signified. What happens when it reaches zero? We transmitted our response using every available radio telescope pointed at 3i Atlas. Then we waited. The hours that followed were excruciating. I've experienced the anticipation of experimental results before, the nervous energy that comes with waiting to see if a theoretical prediction will be confirmed or demolished by empirical reality. But this was different. This was waiting to learn whether we just announced humanity's presence to something that might view us the way we view bacteria in a petri dish. 47 hours after our transmission, 3i Atlas responded. The signal that came back was unlike anything we'd detected before. It wasn't just mathematical sequences or genetic blueprints. It was information dense beyond our ability to fully process it. Terabytes of data compressed into a transmission format that suggested computational capabilities we can barely imagine. Our team has spent the past week attempting to decode even a fraction of what we received. And what we've uncovered so far has left us grappling with questions that challenge the very foundation of how we understand consciousness, intelligence, and our place in the cosmic hierarchy. The transmission included what appears to be a historical record. Not of 3i Atlas itself, but of Earth, our planet. But it's a history told from a perspective outside our world. Observations collected over thousands of years. Images of ancient civilizations we recognize from our archaeology, but seen from space, from angles that should have been impossible to capture before the advent of satellites. Data on our atmospheric composition going back millennia. Records of our genetic evolution tracked with precision that suggest monitoring on a scale and duration we find almost incomprehensible. We are not discovering alien intelligence. We are learning that alien intelligence has been discovering us for a very, very long time. But the most disturbing element of the transmission wasn't the historical data. It was what came after. A simulation, a predictive model of human civilization's trajectory based on observed patterns. And in that model, we saw something that has haunted me every moment since I first processed it. The simulation showed humanity at a crossroads, not sometime in the distant future, but now, within our lifetimes. The model predicted with mathematical precision the exact point at which our technological advancement outpaces our wisdom, the moment when our capacity to destroy ourselves exceeds our capability to prevent that destruction. It showed timelines where we survive this bottleneck and emerge as a truly advanced civilization worthy of joining whatever galactic community exists out there. And it showed showed timelines where we don't, where we follow the path of countless other intelligent species that rose to the edge of cosmic awareness only to fall back into extinction, victims of their own cleverness untempered by collective wisdom. The countdown, we now understand, isn't marking the arrival of an invasion fleet or the beginning of first contact. It's marking the window, the narrow span of time during which humanity will determine which timeline we follow. And 3i Atlas is here to observe that determination, to record whether we pass the test or join the cosmic graveyard of failed intelligences. We're at 147 now, 147 of whatever unit of time the countdown measures. We don't know if it's days, months or some other interval. But we know it's finite. We know something is coming, some threshold we'll cross that will define our future among the stars or mark our irrelevance in the grand equation of cosmic evolution.
I've spent my entire career trying to understand the fundamental laws that govern reality, string theory, parallel universes, the nature of space and time. I've peered into the mathematical structure of the cosmos and marveled at its elegant complexity. But in the face of 3i Atlas and what it represents, I find myself confronting a more unsettling question than any equation has ever posed. What if intelligence itself is the test? What if the universe, through whatever mechanisms of cosmic evolution or deliberate design we can barely conceive, has established certain criteria for which species deserve to persist, to expand, to join the community of advanced civilizations. And what if we're failing that test right now as I speak to you? I, I look at our world, the technological marvels we've created, the scientific understanding we've achieved, the art and music and literature that speaks to the depth of human consciousness, and I see a species capable of extraordinary beauty and insight. But I also see the divisions, the violence, the short-sighted exploitation of our environment, the inability to think beyond tribal boundaries even as we develop technologies that could unite or destroy our entire planet. The countdown continues, and I find myself wondering if 3i Atlas is simply a neutral observer, a cosmic data collector, or if it's something more, a warning, a final chance, a message from civilizations that have been where we are are now, that understand what's at stake, and that want us to know we're being watched at our most critical moment. Every night I look up at the sky, I think about Voyager, still traveling through interstellar space, carrying our golden record with its images of human life. I think about the messages we've sent into the cosmos, our desperate desire to be known, to be recognized, to matter in a universe so vast, it can make you feel infinitesimally small. And now I wonder if those messages have always been heard, if we've never been alone, never been unobserved, and that the silence we've experienced isn't the absence of response, but the patience of observers waiting to see what we become. Follow this channel as we continue decoding the universe's final warnings, as more data comes in from 3i Atlas. As we translate more of the transmission and understand more of what's being revealed, I'll share what I can. We're living through what may be the most significant moment in human history. Not the moment of first contact, but the moment of first judgment. I want to leave you with a question. The same question that keeps me awake as the countdown ticks lower. If we knew, truly knew, that we were being evaluated by an intelligence far beyond our own, that our future as a species depended on choices we're making right now, would we change? Would we be capable of transcending our limitations, our divisions, our short-sighted self-interest? Or are we, like so many species before us, trapped by the very nature of how intelligence emerges, forever caught between wisdom and destruction, unable to bridge that final gap, the countdown stands at 147. 3i Atlas continues its silent observation, and somewhere in the vast darkness between the stars, something is waiting to see what happens next. What will we become? What do we deserve to become? And are we even capable of making that choice, or was it decided long ago, written into the fabric of who we are by the same cosmic forces that created consciousness itself? The clock is ticking, the universe is watching, and the most terrifying realization of all might be this. We may not even know when we've crossed the threshold, when the judgment has been rendered until it's far too late to change the verdict. What do you think happens when the countdown reaches zero? Comment below and tell me, are we ready for what comes next?